meeting for Tuesday, November 14th, year 2000. Um, we will start with the first item on our agenda, which is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. We do have a couple of minor adjustments, I think, um, to the agenda. We um, have under new business a um, consideration of a proposal for a high school chorus field trip to Montreal. We're going to move that up um, under the, did you say principal's reports? Um, when Pete does the high school, um, we will uh, put that um, piece of business in there. Is there any other adjustments to the agenda? Okay, we're going to move on. Approval of the October school board minutes. Uh, these are in your packet. Are there any adjustments to be made to those? Otherwise, they would stand as approved. Seeing none, I'm going to move on. Um, and we will ask for comments by our high school representatives. Representative tonight. Um, I just want to let everyone know Sarah is sorry, but she couldn't make it to the meeting tonight. Um, our fall sports have basically come to a close. The field hockey team um, had a great season, and they unfortunately lost in the state finals, but it was a big accomplishment, and it's the fur furthest they've made it in a long time. Um, the 5v5 football tournament, sponsored by the senior class, got off to a start today. And it was a good time for everyone so far. Um, there's a dance Friday sponsored by the Parents Association with um, student DJs. And at our last essay, or not our last, but the meeting before, um, Chief Williams and Officer Gaspar came and spoke with us. And we discussed the um, possibility of the presence of a police officer in the school um, for in a regular basis, but not in a confrontational type of way, just so they'd have a regular presence. And for the most part, um, I think most of the SAC members were pretty um, happy with the idea and thought it would be a positive thing. So I think that's uh, most of what we've done in the past month. Thank you. Any questions for Kirsten? Thank you very much. Good You're job. Um, middle school uh, representatives. Hi, my name is Derek Bailey, and tonight I'm going to be talking about what the 5th and 6th graders have been doing the past few weeks and what they're going to be doing in the future. Um, the 5th grade has, has had an, a language arts assessment this morning. Um, and uh, a few weeks ago, they had their first outdoor experience at uh, Kettle Cove, and they will be having those every trimester. Uh, the fifth and sixth grade, the fifth and sixth graders are having uh, had a social, and that was a very good. That was a good success. And the fifth and sixth grade chorus has a concert tomorrow night. Also, the sixth grade band will be performing that night. Um, the Sally Foster gift wrap has ended, and we raised forty-eight thousand dollars. But since the Sally Foster Incorporation has to profit, so they take fifty percent from that so we earned um, twenty four thousand dollars so um, the sixth grade ha had also the uh, assessment this mo uh, assessment but theirs was last week and mr. record sixth grade class is co collecting money um, for people that are in need of wheelchairs in Costa Rica um, for the drama club, which is five through eight, people can participate in. Um, they're doing a Broadway musical, The Music Man, and the sign-ups are gonna begin soon, and the performances will be April 5th, 6th, 5th um, and 6th, all at 7 p.m., and that's all, and Christine will talk about the 7th and 8th. 
Good evening. We recently had a successful first dance for the 7th and 8th graders, and we are having another dance on December 8th. Um, there is a 7th and 8th grade band and chorus concert this upcoming Thursday. The 8th graders visited, visited Chiwanki last Monday to help repair trails and maintain campsites for future use. Um, and we are currently holding several charity drives, and some of them are canned, one of the, a couple are the canned food drive, shoeboxes for kids, and coats for kids. Um, these are, the food drive is held by the, um, the whole school, and the others are like per advisory. And all grades have recently completed assignment, assessments in various categories to work on the comprehensive assessments plan. And coming up is Kiev from November 27th to December 1st. Any questions? Terrific. Questions for Derek or Christine? <coughs> Good job. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on now to communications. Um, and uh, one of the items here is update on the high school students' uh, April trip to Italy. You have in, in, in the packet um, at the time of the presentation last spring on the, the, the trip to Italy, um, it asked for periodic updates. Um, so under communications, just to share with you, um, the advisor is or the person who's running the trip, uh, to, just to give you an update as where they are as far, right now uh, as far as the, the trip is concerned. Also, I'd just like to, to share um, couple other items of communication. Um, one is I did receive a call from newly elected uh, Representative McLaughlin um, asking um, for school board input into issues you feel are important and um, legislation you might want to see sponsored. Um, that's um, I think a very nice gesture and it's probably one of the first times, I think it is the first time that a newly elected person has made the effort to call and really ask if we wanted any legislation sponsored. Um, so that, that is out there. Also, I'd like to share uh, with the board that um, on the invitation of uh, Mr. Weatherby, I was, spoke to the uh, winter coaches this evening about the captain's club, and it's been very well received by the coaches, and a lot of progress is being made with the group. They've had three meetings um, in looking at what their role as leaders are in, in the schools, and I think it's something that the coaches um, are supporting and, and really feel is important. Also, you have um, under communications a letter of resignation from uh, Daniel Paul, um, who, as soon as we find a replacement, uh, has resigned um, for reasons outlined in your letter. And on the last item, um, uh, board member Jim Rowe. Um, is requesting to, um, to uh, not be involved in any possible action that might be involved with um, any kind of a, a future building or construction project um, due to a possible conflict of interest. And which ordinarily would not be a role of a school board member anyway. Right. So it's, it's, it's pretty clean, but we do appreciate uh, Jim submitting that letter. Other items? Um, I just have uh, a little bit of an update in terms of um, under communications. Um, there has been a subgroup of board members who have been working um, over the course of the last um, couple or a few months maybe um, on a school board assessment. Um, last year we did, a, did administer a, um, an assessment of the board, basically an evaluation um, process and invited input in terms of um, how the board might improve um, their operations and their functions. Um, the instrument that we used was one that we had borrowed. Um, it was um, valuable in, ter in terms of providing feedback, um, but certainly had a lot of room for improvement. And <clears throat> both Susan and Elaine have taken some leadership in, in terms of orchestrating, um, uh, putting together a, a new instrument and um, others of us have uh, been in, involved with that and we'll just keep um, uh, keep providing updates as we go unless there's um, anything that we wish to offer now. All set? Okay. 
Thanks. Other communications? I'm going to move on. Uh, comments from the public? Seeing none, um, we'll move to recognition. None at this time. Okay. Um, and the superintendent's report, the future direction action team. Um, in an effort to keep you um, informed um, each month regarding future direction action teams, um, they will be meeting um, on November 21st for a full day. They have had several meetings uh, throughout the year, but they'll be spending a full day uh, in looking at the goal of, of really nailing down what their specific objectives will be uh, regarding um, the action planning process. Um, the action teams um, also will be conducting focus groups, um, most likely in January once the, the draft of their objectives are set um, with uh, parents um, and community members. Um, they also are seeking input from administrators and I would like to, uh, I will inform the school board of when any of those um, those forms are taking place, so feel free to you know, uh, come and give your input to any of the action teams. They're dealing with issues from curriculum, professional development, um, you know, school culture, uh, all of the different strategic goals, so feel free to attend any one of those sessions you feel um, might meet your needs. Also, um, under my report, the district leadership team um, has been involved beginning this summer in professional development activity. We felt there was a need for our group as the leadership group in the school district um, to really um, look at ourselves and our leadership capacity, how we work as a group and how we collaborate as a group. Um, in doing this, we've um, contracted with a group education by design out of Antioch College and they've been working with us on a regular basis this year. One of the outcomes I think that will be very beneficial will be a new model for supervision and evaluation of administrative personnel uh, that will come out of this. Uh, the conversation we had at our last meeting and I think what will come at our, our next meeting is, is something that's a, it's a bit different. I think it's uh, very comprehensive but really is designed uh, as a growth instrument for all of our administrators and um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to share that with the board at either and even if it's in a draft uh, stage, either at our December or, or January meeting. And lastly, um, just to give you, a, again, um, an update on the shortened days. We did have two of the shortened days. Uh, both of those days so far have been um, late arrival days. Um, they've been very well received by staff. Um, a lot of things are, are happening. Um, they tie right into our overall professional development program for the district. The conversations that are going on in those shortened days at each of the schools are the same conversations, the same kinds of activities and follow through that are happening on the full day professional development days. And just a brief synopsis, um, at, at Pond Cove, uh, things, teachers are uh, analyzing teaching techniques and looking at uh, instruction. They have grade level teams that have been meeting and conducting joint meetings, um, discussing such grade level concerns with a focus on, on literacy. Uh, the literacy team has set priorities and guidelines um, and they're discussing things as, such as student grouping, uh, lessons and explorations into techniques to improve things like um, reading comprehension. Um, Tom will probably be talking to you tonight about the follow up to that and what's going to be happening at Pond Cove in, in some classroom visits in a way for teachers to follow up on what's been happening on those, those shortened days. At the middle school, um, as you read in, in any of the, the publications that come out of any of the schools, we've made a great effort to get out to the community how we've been using these days. But even today, I know they were involved with some, some assessments which the students had talked about, but uh, grade level teams at the middle school and a world language team have developed assessments and aligned them with the main learning results and national standards. Uh, the teams have created rubrics for scoring. Uh, assessments have been focused uh, on academic skills such as grammar um, and other skills that have to do with summary, summarizing and identification of main idea and supporting details. Very specific kinds of things, but I think very conducive to the whole assessment, assessment process. The language team also there is dealing with measuring of of oral 
proficiency. At the high school, a lot of work with assessment. Um, it's departmentally based. Um, one of the issues at the high school, as you know, we have several sections of the same course. Um, and what they're struggling with is how do you create common assessments so regardless of which, which class you happen to be in, are you being assessed in a similar way. Uh, there's been a lot of time spent in uh, certain curricular areas and dealing with assessments and portfolios and different ways of assessing students, um, reviewing state and national standards. Um, and all of this is, is, is quite complicated, but um, what helps is having that time for teachers to meet together and dialogue about what they're doing in their classrooms. Something that I see in common at all of the schools, um, it's been a very productive time, especially the, the, the first few, few that we've had, um, and it's our first attempt at a late arrival. Um, we still have a five-hour day, which is much better when we, than when we had the uh, half days before, which in three and a half hours uh, really, um, to the students, doesn't seem like a full day. The five-hour day um, is a substantial day and is, is quite productive for the students. And for those, uh, especially middle level and high school students, um, they come to school a bit refreshed and relaxed and ready to go when they're starting at 9 o'clock as opposed to 7.30. Um, and also with the teachers, doing, uh, conducting staff development activities first thing in the morning as opposed to after they've had a full day of teaching um, really has uh, taken that whole productivity level and, and taken, it, taken it up another notch. And the feedback from staff so far has been very good about uh, the use of those, of those days. That's great. And it's nice to continue to, um, to hear the, the progress there. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, the principal's reports. And um, we'll start with Pon Cove, Tom. Good evening. Um, just to follow up on what Tom just reported about uh, the use of professional development time, I want to take a few moments to let you know about a new activity that just started at Pond Cove this week. The literacy team planned forums at faculty meetings and team meetings uh, for the first third of the year. But we also realized with the two professional development com days coming up next week that it might be a good time to encourage and you know, maybe strongly encourage teachers to visit each other to see some of these teaching models in practice. So this week, for four days, each teacher has an opportunity to go to a selected classroom, uh, make arrangements ahead of time, go in and visit, and uh, other supports are in place so that both faculty rooms have refreshments, a place for uh, people to sit down and talk about what they saw. And we put out copies of articles and books which are getting thumbed and read, and it, so it's worked out really well. Next Tuesday, as the second, uh, the second day of our professional development, we'll schedule time for people to get together, talk about what they saw, ask questions, and if this works out, we'd like to do it again. I if it does work out, I think it will, I think Pond Cove just reached a new level of uh, encouraging uh, collegial relationships in Pond Cove. I, I think it's terrific. I really want to thank um, Barbara McLean and Nancy Angier, too, for getting the sub teams to come this week, because without the subs, this doesn't work. They've done a great job with it. After the Thanksgiving break, we, uh, we, we face the next round of the uh, MEA exams, in grades 4, 8, and 11, in reading, writing, and health. And I'm sure you'll hear more about that. And I wanted to compliment the um, high school for their ongoing efforts to connect with Pond Cove, uh, particularly in science, because um, high school students have been coming down regularly at Pond Cove teacher's request to help out with the lab part of the assessments. And it's one of those things that's worked out so well, I think we'll be uh, asking for more of them to come down regularly. We really appreciate it since one of the visits, 18 high school students signed up to come it was during exam week. Uh, and we know how seriously they take those. Uh, so thank you to the high school and the science teachers. And looking back a month, um, last month we had Kevin Hawks come, the author illustrator who happens to live in Gorham, but is nationally known for his work. And I think it's really the, the foresight in the work of librarian Shari Robinson that gets these great people here. She did a terrific job, and she was well supported by the parents to make that uh, quite a two days for us. And the Pond Cove Parents Association just continues to support teaching and learning in a cheerful social atmosphere at Pond Cove with the Fall Fest, um, 
with the bulletin board displays, which um, they're way beyond my capacity to do, and they're really good. And by uh, allowing uh, teachers, upon request, to submit many grants to do something a little out of the ordinary in teaching and learning that we haven't included in the budget, because a little of that goes a long way, and it really improves the climate. So thanks to the parents, too. Any questions? Questions or comments for Tom? Thank you very much. Sure. Move on to the high school, Pete. Uh, Betsy Labway, Betsy DeGroff, is, uh, has been for the last two and a half years the choral music teacher uh, at the high school. Uh, has done a wonderful job of continuing uh, building the momentum in both quality and quantity in our choral music program. Uh, any of you who have attended recent concerts, I think, can attest to that. Uh, this year has been exploring uh, one of those other ways that we uh, sometimes use to both uh, give students a, a learning experience, uh, give them a taste of uh, competition, and in the process uh, continue building interest uh, in the program for other students that may not have considered it uh, before. Um, that, uh, that method is through uh, uh, attending uh, a, a competition uh, and those there are many of them that, that come up, many opportunities, and Betsy's had enough experience through her previous experiences uh, in schools to, uh, to know some of the better programs. And she's here tonight to present an idea that we've been batting around and that she's had the opportunity to pass in front of the parents of the, uh, uh, of the choral group. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to ask her to come forward and give you the details of the program, and then we can both answer questions. We, the, the meeting that she had uh, with the parents, and we weren't really sure whether parents were going to be interested in this. Uh, the, that meeting took place last Wednesday, which was you know right before the long weekend, so we didn't have the opportunity to have everything in writing uh, in front of you because we weren't sure whether it was going to be. We'd asked Mary to put it on the agenda, but we weren't sure that we would be coming to you to ask for it or not. So we can provide further information in writing, but we uh, are asking tonight for a preliminary approval so that uh, fundraising efforts can go forward if you, um, if, if you approve. Let's see. Thank you. I'm coming today from uh, a festival that I took the students to in Oakland, Maine, uh, where they performed for other schools in the state. And I'm pleased to say that I was very, very proud of the groups. Um, this is a festival. I gave you a handout. Um, the particular date that we're looking at would be on the front, on the very front uh, cover, April 26th to 29th. It would involve 20 stu 22 students from the Select Treble Choir, which is a new choir this year, and also from the Select Choir, a choir that meets after school. Uh, the cost would be $545 for the, for the four days and three nights, which would include uh, breakfasts plus a um, banquet dinner, um, optional activities, meaning uh, that, that would be on your last sheet, some of the possibilities for the optional activities. The registration of, for the festival plus the hotels, um, the accompanist, the bus using a mainline bus. The festival that uh, I've chosen is the Heritage Festival. I've used it before. Their format is uh, very educational and exciting for the young people. It's uh, everyone comes away feeling like they've accomplished something. They, they have three judges. The students perform for, for the judges. The judges, while they're performing, are giving comments onto a cassette tape, and the group is able to bring back those cassette tapes so that they, they actually get four tapes. They get one of their performance alone, they, and then they get one with comments from each of the three judges. In addition, they get a clinic uh, with one of those three judges, and these are nationally known judges. Um, I was very pleased uh, to get Eif Ely in the last one I went to, and he's one of the most well-known choral conductors in the country. Um, we would be taking three chaperones. Um, in the meeting last, last Wednesday, 
we had over half the parents there, or, or represented, at least one from over half of the students, and um, they were unanimous, unanimously in favor of such a, an activity. So in favor that they formed, um, just in case it was approved, they formed a uh, fundraising, fundraising co-chairs, plus um, one, one father was willing to make calls to um, corporations to see if they could get corporate sponsors for fundraising. Uh, and also two student um, co-chair people for fundraising. The momentum is very strong, and the students that would be involved in this are incredibly dedicated and reliable. Um, I, am, I am excited to be a spokesman for them, spokesperson for them. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, the they, the students would be learning by hearing other other performers as well, because we can we can put into this schedule along with a balance of sightseeing and and their own competition uh, and performances. They would be able to hear some of the other groups perform and to compare um, with the progress that they have made in the last two and a half years. Um, they learn by gaining the performance experiences themselves and by listening to the evaluations and working with the judge. So if you have any questions, I guess we could both answer. Questions from board members with regard to the trip? Now, any down this on? Um, my sense is that um, essentially we're being asked for a preliminary approval, which is in some ways polling the board about you know, how, how, um, how uh, favorable they are on the idea and that subsequently we would have things in writing that would give us all of the details and there's, a, there's kind of a format that is, is easy to follow and, and so on. Um, so if the board members don't have any um, specific questions, um, I guess I might just ask um, an indication of their, of their interest in, in, in providing some preliminary approval to move ahead. And maybe I'll start down this end here. Susan? I'd support it at this point. Okay. What were the weekdays involved? In the, uh, the 26th to the 29th, I think it's Thursday it to Friday, uh, Thursday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. it, would, it, would be, it would involve two school days. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd support. Okay. Marie? Yes, I think it sounds wonderful. Okay. Jennifer? <laughs> I think it's great. My only question, I guess, is how the stuff that we had says that we need to approve this one and it's different from the Italy trip and I wasn't quite sure how. Italy is not a school sponsored trip. Okay, but why is this school sponsored? Because this is a, the chorus is a school group. Group, okay. Yeah. Right. And it's tied to the curriculum that they are studying and so forth, whereas the Italy trip okay. has nothing to do with the, That's just with the random kids right. who happen to form a group, but okay. Thank you. Elaine? Um, I think it looks great. Um, I guess my only question is, is um, what happens with the fundraising? Um, I, I've not having experience with that, is that pretty successful or do you look, what happens if it doesn't happen? Well, um, the, in the discussion with the parents on, in that meeting, um, they, they decided that, of course, it, it's a lot of money to raise, but they were very excited about, about doing it, and they had some, some immediate plans. Um, one, I, I could give you what some of their plans were. Um, the, the immediate one is um, selling some candles that right up until the holidays um, and trying to get it out before this weekend, obviously, because the students are gone all next week because they'll be visiting grandparents and et cetera. Um, bottle drives, um, concerts. Uh, and their first and foremost, um, I should say, cause was to meet the needs of those who um, cannot afford it first and then see how much they could bring down um, those that uh, would better be able to afford it. And they discussed going through the social worker um, at the high school. Um, they also discussed that the first thing they would do is send out a commitment form um, to the to all the parents and make sure they get a firm commitment and a deposit 
and um, also tell who would be in need of aid and send that directly to the social worker. As I told them, I would rather not know that information. Okay. And then the 24000 that was raised in the middle school, I think, will come in handy. <laughs> yes, that's a good idea. Will those, will those U.S. or Canadian dollars be? <laughs> It's a lot cheaper if you go with U.S. dollars. <laughs> um, Kevin. Uh, I certainly would support this kind of activity for the students uh, in your group. I am, however, less favorably disposed towards the idea of additional fundraising in the community. But that's one of these days we're going to hit the straw that breaks the camel's back, but I am favorably disposed towards the trip. Tom, did you have comments, I, and I probably should have asked, asked you before even pulling the board, any, <coughs> any comments or? No, and I, I think, um, I, I think Kevin is, 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 has a good point about the fundraising. That's something we do an awful lot of in this community, and, and hopefully we'll be able to get a handle on that. My comment would be not to penalize this group, and I think it's nice to have a, a a venture that's that's you know that's in the arts that's that's going to have um, this kind of an activity, um, but I th I see there have already thought about a lot of the the issues about those who can't afford to go and not to someone to be discounted because of that. Um, and the two days of school miss, and I hope everyone understands and that um, because your approval is because of it is a, a school trip and we're responsible as. The difference between this and the, the Italy trip, what you approved there was the kids will be missing a day of school for that, and you're, you're allowing them to do that, but the trip is, is not under our, our jurisdiction. If a, tri if a teacher would like to take a group of students through some travel agency to Italy, and it's completely during a school vacation, that's their choice, the parents' choice, and mm -hmm. it's nothing to do with the school. So there is. There is a, I know it's confusing, but there is a difference, and that's why we need to take a look at this and look at the guidelines. One suggestion I would have, um, and Pete, maybe you and I can do this, is to really put down um, some sort of a real form so that it would be a lot easier. We ask the same questions every time, and George always refers to there's a format, <laughs> but I don't think we have. We know the questions. There used questions. to be a format. I know there used to be a well, format. But if we had created some sort of a form that could just <clears throat> fill in the blank, the same questions come up and make things a lot easier each one of these And things. there is there is a suggestion for a format that right. we don't have the form itself, but but the items are included and I was scrambling to find it when Betsy and I were talking on the phone and I couldn't come up with it. So I, I remembered as many things as I could. <laughs> That's good. And I think you did a good job. It was very complete. Um, the the uh, thing that we wanted to do, I think, was to get and the thing that we were being asked for was a preliminary approval, and it, and it appears certainly that um, the board is, is uh, favor, favorably disposed to saying, go ahead, move ahead. Um, we would um, like to have for our next meeting um, the specifics, and that would be presented to the board members in their packet so that they can review all of that and come prepared to ask any other questions that they might have. So a final approval would be pending a re that review. And, um, and we could give that to you at the next board meeting, but there's really no reason to, to not move ahead um, as I'm seeing with, um, with your, your plans um, and the fundraising and all of that other business. So we do appreciate it. And um, I know that there were some of us <coughs> who were at the um, uh, MSMA conference um, just a couple of weeks ago and we were entertained um, at dinner um, by a chorus um, from Bangor, and it was really it was it was phenomenal. They were they were terrific, and it was great um, uh, to have them there, and, and great to be there that evening to to hear them. So, um, good luck on the uh, the fundraising, and uh, and move ahead by all means. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your time and support. Just quickly on other news, uh, Kirsten mentioned uh, that we, uh, uh, she mentioned the outline of, of something that we presented to the SAC. Uh, last spring, uh, Dwight Ely uh, and I, in concert with Paul Gaspar, the community liaison officer uh, for the Cape Elizabeth Police Department, uh, started talking about uh, various ways that we could accomplish a couple of different things. Um, one was to increase the awareness of the uh, total 
Cape Elizabeth Police Department of the physical plant of the high school in case we ever need them to, to be over there for any type of uh, health-related or security-related uh, issues. Um, uh, another very important uh, factor that we were discussing is that many of our young people in the town uh, have meetings with the police now uh, under less than favorable circumstances and police have meetings with the young people of the town under those same circumstances and we wanted to create more opportunities for the police uh, members of the police department and our student body to interact um, in normal everyday circumstances so that they get to know one another uh, as human beings uh, and uh, Gradually, uh, these uh, discussions have, have increased uh, through the fall with Chief Williams involved. Um, and we have come upon a format that we think uh, can work and that the police department was willing to uh, support and that is using uh, Paul Gaspar as community liaison officer to come into the uh, high school one day a, a week and, and we're working on the schedule of whether that will be a a, a set day of the week or rather uh, you know a, a different uh, different day each week we're providing uh, office space uh, for him a place for him to to work and the intent of that uh, program would include uh, the the uh, uh, the goals that I that I mentioned earlier but the activities would uh, I think have an interesting uh, possibility for an interesting range uh, they could include uh, things like um, being invited as a guest speaker to classes where a particular topic that would be uh, of, uh, in Paul's area of interest and expertise uh, was going to be covered. Uh, lunchtime, bring a lunch to the lecture hall kinds of uh, 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 presentations by Paul on topics of interest, uh, uh, what constitutes harassment in a, you know, in a school setting, uh, uh, substance issues, uh, use of alcohol, underage use of uh, alcohol, driving issues, uh, uh, endless topics that could be presented at lunchtime, informal lunchtime gatherings of students that are interested. Um, advising, uh, having an office to uh, be able to talk with students and or faculty members who had questions regarding various uh, legal issues. Inviting other officers uh, over to the school to have lunch with them uh, and in the process uh, tour the building, get more familiar with the nooks and crannies. Um, and I think we're, I've presented this to the faculty uh, at, a, at our recent faculty meeting, to the, the SAC at the last SAC meeting. Our next plans are presenting it to the parents through a letter that I will be uh, writing along with Chief Williams and uh, a either a letter or we're still working on the, the format of spreading the word further through the student body. We know that one thing we will do is have before the start of the program, which we anticipate to be in early December, um, before the start of the program, we would have some lunchtime sessions for interested faculty or students uh, to come and, and talk about the program. What are their questions or concerns? What are their hopes uh, for the program? We, we are very optimistic about it. I think it shows a lot of promise. And one of the things that's interesting to me is that it's already spinning off with other ideas. Um, would all of the time need to be, if, there, if, if Paul is going to be in the school for uh, seven hours uh, you know, a week, would it, would it necessarily all be during the school day or would a couple of hours of that be uh, helping to supervise an evening volleyball, recreational volleyball program for students or uh, you know, just ideas that are starting to spin off. Uh, st students at the SAC meeting uh, asked Chief Williams if he had considered entering a team in the five versus five football uh, <laughs> tournament. Uh, Chief Williams asked them if they had seen some of the younger members of the department and if they were really sure that they wanted to extend that invitation. Uh, but it, it, good spirit. I mean, I like to see that kind of uh, dialogue and bantering. It was, uh, it was good to see. We've already, uh, in our any time that we do meet now, it used to be that whenever uh, you, Chief Pickering or Chief Williams came over or Paul, we would usually meet in my office. Uh, last spring we started saying, why are we doing this? Why don't we go meet in the cafeteria? Uh, so that, um, you know, so that it's evident that, that we sometimes meet, you, that you aren't over here to pull people out uh, uh, or anything like that. You're over here to, to be talking uh, with us and us to be talking with you. Uh, I want to emphasize that the purpose of a community liaison officer in the school is not for enforcement. 
uh, he would be a kind of an adjunct staff member uh, that certainly if, if he saw something that were against school rules would let me know the same as a uh, or uh, Dwight Ely the same as a teacher would but he's not there to be cracking heads and, uh, and enforcing uh, he would be a police officer at all times that is his job and that's his primary job but uh, I feel good about the response that has been uh, given by both the faculty and the SAC in our initial meetings and I have no reason to expect that uh, there will be anything different with uh, parents. So we'll be, uh, hope, we, we hope to start early December. We also will be kicking off the, f the more formal or structured part of our, uh, of our thematic program. Uh, as you know, the, the theme this year has been uh, reg uh, civility, respect, uh, anti-harassment. Uh, and uh, Katie Lisa and, and Belinda Snell have completed training now of 72 students uh, that have gone through facilitator training and those students will now be, uh, some of those students will be taking an additional training with uh, Steve Wessler who's going to be coming to the high school uh, on, on uh, November 20th to work, November 16th, Thursday to work with the students for a full day, November 20th to work with the faculty for a half day during uh, the first of our workshop days and then um, on December 8th uh, Mr. Wessler will be presenting a brief, will be the main speaker at a brief assembly, which will be followed by roundtable discussions, which are facilitated by the uh, students who have gone through the facilitator training. Uh, very pleased with the number of students that have uh, both shown an interest and have been recruited by teachers who were looking to expand that uh, leadership role in the high school. And uh, Katie and Belinda, I think, are to be commended for all the work uh, in, the, uh, in the training. They feel very optimistic about the way that it's gone. So at the uh, next board meeting, I'm hoping that I will uh, have a report to you on our first uh, set of roundtable discussions. Right now, we have three planned for the year. Um, and we will add a fourth, if, you know, depending on uh, whether the need exists. Finally, the elections uh, went very smoothly at Cape Elizabeth High School contrary to uh, what has gone on uh, in, in other areas of the country. Um, I think that the late start, uh, I, I, uh, uh, in looking at the traffic leaving uh, of the voters who came early, uh, I do shudder to think what, uh, what it would have been like if we had students and parents uh, delivering students uh, coming in at the same time that voters were coming in. That was a very busy time of the year, and I think that strategy paid off well. Uh, the stream was very steady. Students, I thought, handled themselves extremely well uh, during the whole election day. Uh, a lot of teachers and uh, Dwight Ely coordinated the work of these teachers uh, in putting up displays in the lobby area so that uh, voters who were so inclined could take a quick detour, uh, see displays that dealt with where our students are attending college, uh, see uh, examples of different uh, work that's being done in the classroom from uh, perspective drawing and geometry class to, uh, oh, there we now I'm shouldn't have started because I'm blanking, but there were, there were several displays that uh, there was a, uh, uh, from boat building class, a kayak uh, that had been completed, just a, different examples of student work, and I hope that uh, some of the voters uh, were able to take a quick walk and, and see that. I thought it went very well, um, and uh, uh, would urge certainly for any major, the national election certainly, to follow the same kind of course of, uh, of having a late start to relieve some of the pressure as long as we keep having the elections at the high school. Good. Questions or comments uh, for Pete? Kevin. First of all, P uh, Peter, I'm pleased uh, at the significantly improving relationship between the high school and the police department and I, I think that the program that uh, you and Paul and Neil have been talking about should work very, very well. Uh, that's number one. Number two is it was fun to go vote this year and not have anybody go. Um, everybody was very, very complimentary about the student body. Um, so that was, a, that was a pleasure in and of itself. And I also did take the opportunity to view the student work that was out there. And the feedback I had from uh, the people that I did speak to was very positive about that. Uh, they enjoyed seeing it, having the opportunity to see it, and I hope we can do more of that in the future. I, I think it fits with one of the, the, the goals uh, uh, that, that we have established to be trying to communicate, and uh, I think um, uh, it, was, it was initially uh, uh, 
uh, Dwight's idea when, when he was saying, wait, we've got, we've got people, you know, droves of people are going to be coming in. Why don't we use that as an opportunity to be communicating with them uh, about some of the things that we're doing at least? Mm -hmm. Seems to have worked, Peter. Uh, thank you. Other questions or comments? Terrific. Thanks, Pete. Um, middle school, Nancy. Good evening. Let's see, first to follow up, um, just for the high school, the money that we raised with Sally Foster, uh, money, we do have that all dedicated to an integral part of our curriculum called Outdoor Experience. So unfortunately, Peter, we won't have any to send your way, but uh, we do have a lot of enthusiastic fundraisers, however. As as the spirit is there. I, I, the I, spirit I, is there. <laughs> the spirit is there. And we wish you well with your endeavors. But don't try to sell gift wrap. <laughs> <laughs> That's our, we've got a market on that. <laughs> also, as um, Christine, Christine and Derek shared with you, our seventh grade will be headed out to Kiev November 27th, and they'll be returning December 1st. In the mid part of the Kiev experience is a parents' day on November 29th. We will be sending a bus up um, with parents, and it will be returning um, in the evening. We intend to bring all the parents back and return them to Cape Elizabeth and just extend an invitation to any school board members who might like to be part of that. Um, for school board members, you do not have to have a student in the seventh grade to go, but if you'd like to, to go and it works out in your daily schedule, please just call our main office and we'll make arrangements to be sure that you can go as well. I know several members of the school board have gone in the past because they have had seventh grade students involved in the, in the program. And um, also to follow up while we're still on outdoor experience, um, this year it costs us approximately um, about $27,000 in tuition for both the Kiev program this year and the Chiwanki program. Chiwanki is actually a little bit more expensive, but we have about 30 less students in the sixth grade class, so that's why the money is about the same. And for instance, for Kiev, a regular week's worth of tuition would be $160 with the fundraising and the money that um, we also have from the school budget towards that. Each family contribution is $41 and we're hoping to reach a similar um, marker <coughs> for the sixth grade Chiwanki experience, but we haven't got all of that money together yet, and we still have a magazine sale that we do in the spring that will help defer some of those costs. Today, I did receive um, a donation um, for our outdoor experience program from the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association. They made a specific donation of $500 to be used for equipment for our outdoor experience program. And I had talked with Paul Gaspar, who happens to be the president of that association this year. And the reason we chose equipment is it's long lasting and it will go on year after year. In the past, we have received donations um, such as this, for, in, for instance, from the Lions Club, and we have brought frame packs with them. And that's something that many families who don't camp for Chiwanki, for instance, you need a frame pack. And if you're not a camping family, you might not have that equipment. And this is something we can continually use. In talking with Paul for a brief moment today about this as well, we may also find some basic equipment that we need for our fifth grade program that we pretty much offer on site. Um, so we will be following through with that. We certainly thank them very much for their contribution and their support. And I will be writing a letter to state that and then also following that up with what we actually do spend the money for. But it is specifically for equipment and not for tuition costs. see. Um, <clears throat> to follow up with what uh, Christine and, and Derek did, they're great lead-in. They're easy to follow because they cover so much of the material very well. Um, on November 20th and 21st, our teachers will be spending time grading those assessments that everybody has been taking um, these last few weeks. And they will spend, especially the 20th, pretty much that day, grading those assessments, um, reflecting on the process of the grade levels as they went through developing the assessments and did it really inform teaching and learning. That was our lens that we ran all of the assessments through. Then we will be getting together as those two days progress to share our learnings with one another from one grade level and from the world language team. And then we will begin our initial discussions on our next um, assessment, which we hope to offer at least one more um, throughout the year. And at this moment in time, it appears that assessment will be done by content area teachers and not as grade level teams. So that will be a little bit different experience for us. We also hope to have some time on the 21st to begin an initial discussion uh, regarding the recognition of outstanding achievement and performance, uh, grading procedures, and comments that we send on progress reports. 
I would caution everyone to know these are very initial discussions and I don't expect any drastic changes in our procedures to happen immediately. I think it will be over time. The eighth graders will be participating in the MEAs um, November 27th and 20th through the 29th, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And we have reorganized their schedules so they don't always miss the same classes um, each time. And we hope that they come to school well rested and um, just do their best um, that they can. I'd like to end tonight with just um, with two things. First of all, reminding you about those concerts they spoke about. Uh, we do have concerts going on both tomorrow night and Thursday night, and if you have some time and want to stop by the high school gym, I know we can entertain you um, with some middle school performers, so we look forward to that. But the story I'd like to end with tonight is one of the things that we come before you with is our co-curricular programs, and just a, less than a year ago in January, we restarted one of our co-curricular, extracurricular activities called, the, it was a student newspaper. The students named our student newspaper the Student Voice. and. It had been lax for a couple of years. Um, last year we had a staff member who volunteered um, her services to do that. This year we do give her sort of an honorarium for doing that. Uh, but last week they invited me to a meeting because they have about 1,010 new ideas of ways to make the student voice uh, more of a viable production. But going to that meeting, it was wonderful. They meet at 7.10 in the morning. Um, the meeting was organized by our editor this year, who happens to be Andy Marston. He's an eighth grade student. And as the students came in, if you could have just been a fly in the wall, you would have been really proud of the way it was organized, represented five through eight. It's a five through eight activity. Um, and as the students came in, it was just sort of like if we read a real newspaper. Do you have your story ready? Remember the deadlines today? Oh, you know, I don't have mine ready. It would be ready on Friday. Well, that's great, but your story will be in next month's production and not this month's uh, kind of thing. And just going through and making sure they had enough stories to run and to go with and figuring out when they were going to do copying and distribution. So certainly it's an activity that's fledgling for us in a way, but is alive and well with middle school spirit. So that was a fun meeting. And I was only there for about five minutes, and it was um, tremendously energizing. So um, I wish them good luck. And my compliments to Andy and his team and to Rachel Guthrie, who is our staff member, who is their advisor. Any questions? Terrific. Questions or comments for Nancy? I don't have any questions specifically for Nancy, but I, I, just thinking out loud, uh, I share in the excitement that the uh, uh, leadership council has expressed and, and that the staff has expressed about the uh, late start early release days and what's going on with those and it, it's all you know tremendously gratifying um, have we yet reached a point or is it anticipated that we'll reach a point where those successes will be noticed by the students and their families um, I think that's an important question for me and I understand it's early in the process we've only had a few of them and, and it's early, but I, I would like to know if, if it's anticipated that we'll have uh, quantitative results from those, uh, maybe uh, reflected in student assessment or, or some other tool. Well, would you count quantitative that two of our middle school students were excited enough about having taken those assessments that they told you about them tonight? Um, or were you looking for bigger quantities? Uh, kind of thing. Um, for us, Jim, I think it, it will be sort of a combination of quantitative and qualitative. We hope the information we get, because in the middle school we're working on assessment, is going to be information that informs our teaching and learning. And we should be able to find some specific things out about, so what were we looking for and how did that make a difference? And we should be able to put that together for you more towards the end of the year yeah, rather than at early. this particular I, point yeah. in time. Thank you. I think it's in, important to note, too, that we do have um, the action planning process. Um, and there is an action team that's charged with looking at professional development. And part of that charge for all of the action teams is to look at what the indicators of success will be, regardless of what the, uh, the action is. And there's also a team that is looking specifically at what those indicators of success might be. So it is early in the process. Uh, it is something we constantly think about. So as we get into this, we will know whether or not it, it makes a difference. Um, but it is very difficult to do it in, in a short period of time. Thank you. I think we also mentioned that in our initial plan, I believe there's a early release for a, no, no, a, a full professional day the end of the uh, year. in May. No. I believe that one of the uses for that day that we have talked about pending uh, the, the action teams reports and so forth was to have that be a day where we showcase 
Thanks. Okay, we're going to move on to committee reports. Uh, the first being finance subcommittee. Kevin. Finance subcommittee met this evening uh, immediately prior to this meeting. We reviewed warrants, uh, which are the monies that have been expended, signed off on those, had an opportunity to review the appropriations report, which is uh, funds that have been expended or encumbered against budgeted uh, line items. And we also are starting to touch on uh, the fund season known as budgeting. Um, we are trying to have Pauline take a look at some increases that we know are fixed, such as salaries and benefits, even though a bit of a moving target, and start to recognize what those figures are. I've also asked uh, the various committee heads whose committees have an impact on the budget to begin to talk about their meetings, uh, for example, co-curricular and athletic fee. So basically, I've asked myself to notify all of you that uh, I will be getting in contact with you regarding co-curricular sometime tomorrow. And that is the extent of our business tonight in finance. Thanks, Kevin. Um, moving on to the policy subcommittee, Jennifer. Um, we had our last policy meeting on November 3rd, and we reviewed um, a couple of the policies that are uh, up for second reading tonight. Um, and we also reviewed section A, B, and C of the policy manual and suggested some changes that um, we will review at a later date. Our next meeting is December 6th. Wednesday at 12 noon in the Jordan Conference Room, and at that meeting we will review um, policy manual sections D, E, and F, and uh, we'll conduct preliminary discussions on athletic policies. Okay, thank you. Um, facilities update, Marie. Okay. Um, well, tomorrow night, the 15th. Um, is our next facilities meeting with the people from SMRT and we're really getting close to the end of their work with us. Um, tomorrow night we should be looking at um, some options based off of all of the input that they have had from everyone over the past few months. Um, at that point we will discuss um, when we will have a public session to really talk about, with the SMRT people, um, to talk about everything that they have come up with. So I will probably let you know that um, next month. However, I would, I would like, if possible, for as many school board members um, as can be to be there tomorrow night to hear, you know, firsthand from um, the company that is doing the work as well as a public session on um, the options for facilities, we will need to have a public session on kindergarten. Uh, and we would very much like to hear from people in term, people in the community in terms of where they are, pro or con, to an all-day kindergarten. Um, the school board really needs to hear from um, everyone to get a sense of what is going on in the community um, before we make any decisions um, on facilities throughout the, the next five to ten years. Um, that will be publicized. I don't know at this point when that meeting will be, um, but that will be publicized as well. Um, if anyone out there would like to contact me, I would be glad to um, hear their comments. Or you can email me um, at mprager1 uh, at main.rr.com. Um, and one other thing, I, I would like to backtrack for a minute and just kind of review for everyone here where we are in the facilities committee before uh, SMRT makes their proposals. 
There will be an article that will be placed in the Cape Courier on the November 25th issue. And basically, to um, summarize what that says and where we are at this point in our work, is that um, we, if, if you recall, the, the areas that we are addressing are our current population problem, the kids that are in our school right now, um, where we have, um, or where we, I should say, where we will have a problem in the next two years is the seventh grade, the current seventh grade class moving into the ninth grade, and the fifth grade class right now in the middle school. Those are two very large classes. With that said, um, they will be moving on to the high school, which started this whole conversation and the whole purpose of the facilities committee. So within the next five to six years, we have a lot of movement and, and things that we need to take care of within each of our schools to accommodate the shift of the increase in students in those two grades, five and seven. Um, actually, it, you know, it's, it's like a domino thing, and, and one thing affects the next thing all the way down to um, kindergarten. What the, one of the simplest ways to describe it, I guess, is that what we are looking for in the facilities committee is to have some flexible space in each of our schools. And for, for example, next year, the middle school, or uh, I'm sorry, this year, the middle school is at maximum capacity for students. They have no extra classrooms. They have no extra space for anything. Um, next year, you know, they have a problem. We need additional classrooms there. So what we are trying to address is to have some type of flexible space which in, within each of our schools. Um, as our population increases or decreases um, every year, there's always a need for space, for um, academic programs, um, you know, such as technology or special education or allied arts, um, or the possibility of a full day kindergarten. So there, there are a lot of things that we do not physically have the space to do or expand on in any of the three schools. Um, one of the major conversations that was had several weeks ago by the administration and the people on the facilities committee was in terms of after the study is completed, it was unanimous, the, the, the consensus in terms of keeping our schools um, the way they are today. And that means Pine Cove, kindergarten through fourth grade, middle school fifth through eighth, and high school nine through 12. Um, and I say that because in our past, you know, we, we made the decision to move the kindergarten from Pine Cove to the high school, and we had a fourth and fifth grade inter intermediary school? Intermediate. In, intermediate school. So that was a decision that we made that, that we really, we want to stick by. Um, and it's important to everyone, especially the administration. Um, with that said, um, what happens is that aside from the high school now needing space with that seventh grade coming in in two years, what will happen if we do nothing, okay, if we just say, oh, you know, we have 100 extra kids going to the high school and, and we do absolutely nothing with this facilities committee, what would happen is um, class sizes, the additional classrooms right now that the, the kindergarten is taking, um, is using, they, they have four classrooms in the high school. Um, our high school, we would increase class size from 18 to 26 students in an average freshman class if we did not get <coughs> any extra classrooms. Um, 
the high school students would be restricted when it comes to trying to schedule electives that they might want. Um, and study halls would have to be held in the cafeteria versus right now we hold study halls in smaller rooms which have been proven to be much more conducive to actually study. Um, and up to five teachers would be without a space of their own or a classroom to organize and plan their day or to meet with students um, and parents. So this is if we would continue to use the four classrooms and the office and storage space that, in, that the kindergartners are currently using in the high school. What would happen in the middle school is that um, the enrollment last year was at 560 students. This year it is at 605, which is maximum capacity. They have no room to breathe. Next year, the enrollment numbers will rise to 624 students. The potential impact of not having any flexible faith, um, space could affect our remedial support services, could affect special education programs, accelerated art programs, or allied arts. Um, what we are looking at in the um, middle school is uh, Nancy really needs at least two extra classrooms next year. Um, now that is if community services continues to occupy the space in the middle school, which otherwise could be used for four classrooms, the two that we are in dire need of next year and two additional classrooms that would just be flexible space to move between programs. What happens at Pond Cove is that currently we are using 27 out of 28 of the classrooms that we have at Pond Cove. Um, so in essence, we have no space to accommodate four classrooms of kindergarten in the school. Um, one possibility would be to move the kindergarten to Pond Cove. If, if we did that, the class size would go from an average of 16 to 18 students, which we have all agreed on in the past, uh, past few years, to approximately 24 to 25 per class. Because what we would have to do is pick one grade level and increase that class size in, or, in order to accommodate it. Right now at Pond Cove, we have a very limited space for the Allied Arts program. And it can only accommodate um, the students in grades one through four. We have no allied arts um, for our kindergartners. Um, and lastly, uh, but by our inability to physically move the kindergarten, it defeats the desire to have kindergarten through four in one location and also stops us from exploring the idea um, of a full day kindergarten. So basically, that's the synopsis of where we are if we choose to do nothing. Um, and after tomorrow night's meeting, we should have um, a little more you know, concrete um, options to choose from. But as I had mentioned, we would need those two public sessions to hear from the community of where we need to go. Okay. okay. Questions, comments? The good news is <laughs> that we did start looking at this over a year ago and that there are, um, there are some, some uh, proposals in terms of how we are not going to end up, certainly in the, in the scenario that um, the, the if we did nothing scenario. Right. So, um, so it is an important uh, meeting tomorrow night. Um, there is also an inherent conflict with um, some of us who have middle school um, uh, students in terms of the, um, the, the uh, presentation, the uh, entertainment at the middle school tomorrow. Um, so when, how long do you expect that to be going? The, the meeting will, will last from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Okay. And it, because actually we have been running till 9.30, 9.45, mm 
9.30, quarter to 10, so I, I assume at least until 9 o'clock. And the meeting is in community services tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow night's festi festivities at the uh, middle school, Nancy? It's at the high school. It, maybe it's, it's at the high it's school. It's at the high school, sorry. It's at the high school, but that should last, um, Joanne and Terry tell me, maybe an hour, an hour and five minutes, maybe a little bit less. So, so around we should be able to get to eight, or, eight or so. Yes. Okay. It starts at 7. Okay, and the, and the uh, facilities meeting is here in the conference room. Is that correct? No, uh, community mm -hmm. services. I'm sorry. Okay, it says in the conference room on the, the list here, but okay. Yeah, me sorry. Um, okay, thank you for that update. And very important stuff that we uh, need to uh, keep attending to. Um, moving now to unfinished business, and we have a number of policies for a second reading. Um, Jennifer, how do you want to present these? I, I know a, just a whole bunch of them are. Um, the special education one. Right. Um, I think I can just read the file no letters and the title. That would be. And group those and then do the other. The other two separately. Right. Okay. <coughs> All right with everybody? Um, our first one is um, referral and pre-referral, IGBAA, and the procedures that go with that, IGBAAR. Um, individual educational plans, IHBA. Student Educational Records Policy, IHBAB, and the regulations that go with that, IHBAB-R. Notification of Rights under FERPA, uh, IHBABA. Child Find Policy, IHBAC. Policy on Programming in the Least Restrictive Environment, IHBAG. And the regulation that goes with that, IHBAGR. Independent Educational Evaluations, IHBAI. Policy on Disciplinary Removals of Students with Disabilities, JKF, and the regulations that go with that, JKF-R. That's it for the special education policies. Um. What we need, um, this is a second reading, and so what we need is a motion. From okay. Kevin. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. I move that we adopt in the second reading of the enumerated special education policies. Terrific. Um, and a second? Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, any comments or questions about any of the policies that um, Jennifer has gone through? I would just suggest the next time um, so as to not have them seem so dry that you actually try to um, phonetically sound out each of the names of the policies, like IBA and <laughs> IBAB and well, all those, I just to sort of entertain us. I did it one of the um, you like purpose? What was that At one? one of the meetings, I did do the... Uh, right. You did do it. Three Stooges, uh, you know, right. B-A-B-B-B. -B 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 -B. Right, that's so. right. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> without further comments or questions, um, all those in favor? And that's 7-0. Seven, seven yes. Okay, um, and move on to um, these other two that actually phonetically I think you'd have a challenge. Okay. <laughs> Student support teams, oh, that's right. Chia. <laughs> that would be a soft C, wouldn't it, Mary? Yes, in that case, yes. it would be. So, yes. Chia. Unless you're pronouncing it in Italian. 
Right. <laughs> A-F-C-I-A-A. -A. Um, should I read this or? Um, There's no change in this. I can read the um, regulation that goes with it. A-F-C-I-A-A-R, and that does have a minor change in it. Okay. In the last sentence, mm -hmm. the following student supports currently existing in the schools. Okay. And maybe R. And then the colon. Um, okay. And then we have um, enrollment of non resident employees, children, G, C, Q, E. And there are a few changes in there. Um, beginning the second sentence with therefore, um, persons who are actively employed. And ending the last sentence with um, and to make a decision based on the best interest of the Cape Elizabeth School District. And I'll read the whole thing for you. Um, a goal of the Cape Elizabeth School District is to attract and retain quality staff. Therefore, persons who are actively employed on a full time basis by the Cape Elizabeth School Department may have their children enrolled without paying tuition provided the administrative conditions established for all non-resident students have been met and affirmed by the superintendent. Staff request for requests for tuition waivers must be made by March 1st of the prior academic year. In all cases, the superintendent has the ability to review special circumstances and to make a decision based on the best interest of the Cape Elizabeth School District. Okay, let's take these separately, Jennifer, because they are okay. different. Um, and, and perhaps we could, um, you could make a motion um, on JFCIAA first with the edits that you did. You can, can do, it? do it. Sure. Oh, I move that we adopt the uh, policy and regulations JFCIAA and JFCIAA R. Okay. Second, Jim, questions or comments on this one, and, and it includes the edits that. Um, Jen presented. Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. You can do the final one if you like. Okay. And I move we adopt um, the policy enrollment of non resident employees' children, file GCQE. Um, with the edits? Oh, um, with the edits yep. that I gave. And a second? Elaine, thanks. Questions? Comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. That's it for second readings, Jennifer? Uh, yes. Um, we're going to move on to new business uh, consideration of the superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions for winter 2000. Under athletic fee positions, I'd like to make the following recommendations um, Sarah Jordan, uh, B Team Girls Basketball, uh, Laura. Cragen Nordic Skiing, and a new high school coach, Ethan Masterman, Nordic Ski Coach. Okay. Um, is there a motion? I have a question. Jen what, what was the last one? Were there, did you read four or three? I read three. Yeah. three. Oh, okay. three. Sorry. Okay. Um, a motion? Jim? I would move that we uh, approve and confirm the superintendent's recommendations for uh, the winter uh, athletic fee positions. Okay, thank you. S a second? Jen, thanks. Questions or comments? Other questions, Jennifer, that you had about this? Or? No, I, just, okay. I thought I had heard him read four. I only had three. Left, okay. So. Um, all those uh, in favor? Seven zero. Thanks. Um, Moving on to uh, co-curricular fee positions. Uh, I'd like to make the following recommendations um, under drama director. Uh, the total 275 hours will be split up between the following individuals. Uh, Steve Price, uh, Christine Trahan, Rachel Starr, and Chris Turner. Okay. Um, we need a m want me to, uh, also at the, um, at the high school under co-curricular. 
um, recommendation for Norman Richardson and Richard Roethlisberger as co-department heads. And also, um, which was not in your packet, but uh, new positions, uh, new individuals that agreed to take on positions, Jamie Gillette for a debate assistant and Beth Lewis as a uh, sophomore class advisor. Okay. Um, we need a motion. Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for the listed co-curricular fee positions. Thanks. Second? Susan, thank you. Comments or questions on any of these? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, and the last piece of business was already attended to before we adjourn for this, this evening. Um, dates to remember the facilities committee meeting that Marie spoke about um, tomorrow night, uh, 7 p.m. at the community services, community services um, school board uh, workshop um, meeting on November 28th, 7 p.m. at the high school library. Um, there's not a final agenda on that one at this point. Um, finance subcommittee will proceed the regular school board meeting on December 12th, finance subcommittee at 6.30, and the regular board meeting at 7.30 here in the chambers, and a policy subcommittee meeting scheduled for Wednesday at noon on December 6th in the William Jordan Conference Room. Those done, thank you, and uh, good evening.